proper physics terms, people. That's what this is all about. Plowed into the back end of me. Proper physics terminology that you have got to learn. Let's learn physics. I don't know about you, but when I drive, I try to relax. Hand on the steering wheel, just checking people out, making sure they're checking me out. Bit of a foot on the gas pedal, and sometimes, you know what, I feel a little bit lazy. And I just put my thumb on the bottom of that steering wheel and drive like that. Sometimes, if I'm putting on my makeup and drinking my Mountain Dew and eating my Whopper, my big double Whopper, I will drive with my left knee. So I've got my both hands. I mean, what, what are you gonna do? You have to actually make choices in life and driving is something you have to do and you probably should be doing other stuff because we need to multitask all the time, right? Because we understand that multitasking is actually a brain possibility, right? Having a good time and everything's great and I'm texting and suddenly, oh no, there's a car ahead of me and I forgot that I should leave a following distance and pay attention. And so I move my foot to the brakes and I start slowing down. Remember, you can swerve, but there's no way to actually get out of the way, so I'm going to run into the back of this vehicle. Now, Newton's first law, Newton's second law, Newton's third law, there's some language that you should use. Objects at rest tend to stay at rest, even Aristotle agreed with that. Everybody agrees with that. Even the flat earthers agree with that. Objects in motion will... No, no, not stay in motion because that's like seventh grade language. And unless you're in seventh grade, that's not okay. We'll maintain a constant velocity using good physics terms or not accelerate. Again, using good physics terms, not going to speed up, not going to slow down, not going to turn a corner unless acted upon by a outside, unbalanced, no, a net force. Gotta use the proper language. Hit the brakes, oh no, you run into the thing and that sound echoes in your head after you've had a couple of them, it's pretty bad. So you run into that vehicle, what does your body do? Well your body was doing what already, right? It was moving. So that body was moving and it will naturally tend to Maintain a constant velocity. Keep moving, but at a constant, it'll keep moving at a constant velocity until acted upon by a net force. Now, if you're driving and doing what you should be doing, you will be wearing a seat belt. Because if you're not, you're an idiot. My uncle, my uncle, he said that he had a, he'd survived an accident because he wasn't wearing a seat belt. Okay, yeah, anecdotal evidence isn't evidence. That's a nice little story. Seatbelts actually do good things to save people's lives. So your body continues forward. The vehicle is stopped by the net force applied backward on it to cause a backward acceleration. After the vehicle is stopped and all the stuff inside the vehicle is stopped because it's attached to the vehicle, you, not directly attached to the vehicle, will continue forward. What stops you? You're wearing your seatbelt. That seatbelt applies a net force backward on you to cause a backward acceleration. So that's what's going to stop you. However, what are your legs gonna do? They're gonna continue forward. What are your arms gonna do? They're gonna continue forward. But you're not super concerned about that. You're concerned about this thing because you still gotta think Make decisions and actually live afterward. And without your brain functioning, that's, that's gonna be bad. So your head continues, your body gets stopped, and your head and right arm in particular tend to keep on moving, tend to maintain that constant velocity unless acted upon by a net force. Now without the airbag, what used to happen, and this happened to me a couple of times in one of my many accidents, without that airbag, your head will continue forward and then, oh, I'm far enough away from the steering wheel because really I am driving like this because the, the, I'm 6'5", and that steering wheel doesn't come very far out, and I am sat all the way back, so I'm driving like this, arm pretty much fully extended. My head is not going to run into that steering wheel. What's it going to do? My head's going to continue forward, not fly forward, because that's what you, it just it flies forward, no, it just continues forward at a constant velocity until acted upon by the net force applied by your 
this. This is the thing that's going to hold your head on. And that's bad. That's going to cause lots of damage to the ligaments and the, I don't know, this isn't biology class. This is going to cause a lot of damage to that. And it's really painful and your head just gets, so what do they do? They develop this airbag thing. We're now on like the, I don't know, the sixth generation of airbags or they're a lot safer. They're seat position sensors. So if you're closer to it and if you weigh less, it will deploy with less force and apply less force to your face. The original one, it just blew up in your face all the time. New ones are better. Anyway, your body continues forward, net force applied backward by the seat belt. Your head then continues forward while your body is being stopped by the seat belt and it's hopefully stopped by the airbag and not your neck. Net force applied backward on your head by the airbag to stop your head during that kind of accident. That is a, that's a rear end collision. The other kind of common collision, and I had one of these things, there was a deer that leaped into the road. This was uh, uh, 20 years ago. 20 years ago? It was about 20 years ago. Deer leaps into the road, and you know, you see one deer, there are usually multiple other deers. The deer's crossing the road, I do not want to hit it. It's dark, it's like uh, 10 o'clock at night. I hit the brakes and I stop, and I'm stopped in the middle of a little two-lane road to let the deer go, go past, and to allow the other deer to show themselves and then go, and then suddenly I see in my rear view mirror, plowed into the back end of me. But you're in the car that gets run into from behind. What happens there? Proper physics terms, people. That's what this is all about. Newton's first law is so much about the proper physics terms. And it is all linked to you memorizing, yes, Yes, I am recommending rote memorization of specific language of Newton's first law. Accelerations, speeding up, slowing down, turning a corner, gas pedal, brake pedal, steering wheel, those are accelerations here in physics for our definition. Keep those definitions in mind and you can actually do this pretty well. You are at rest. And what do you tend to do naturally? You naturally tend to remain at rest. The car. Car's at rest, car remains at rest, and then the car gets plowed into from behind. What happens? Well, the vehicle, the car, from the bumper to bumper collision, bam, there's a net force applied forward on the car, and then the car applies with all the attachment points, all the necessary net forces to get that thing accelerating forward. But you, you're not part of the car, right? So you have a natural tendency to remain at rest until the net force is applied to you, and that net force applied to you is applied by the... Okay, don't say the other car, because it's not the other car. It, what, you want that car to jump in through like the whole vehicle and run into you directly? That's not good. The car does not apply a force to you. You, this. And this is one of the advantages of drawing free body diagrams from the beginning of physics. When you draw free body diagrams, you isolate one object and draw all the forces, and only the forces, acting on that one object. And if you can do that, you can think about this, just you. You. Get the weight, get the normal force, it's kind of like hanging out, right? But then suddenly there has to be a net force forward on you. What's touching you that can push you forward? The seat. So the seat, the seat actually applies a force to, to push you forward. That's the net force that causes your acceleration to stay with the vehicle. But what's left out in space? Your delicate brain, again, is left out there, and you have to get that thing accelerated forward. Now, in a situation where long, long, long ago they had bench seats that ended right about here, what happened? Well, that whole thing, this gets pushed forward, and that force pushes your lower body forward, but your upper body and head tend to stay right there. And what causes your head to accelerate? Well, it's, again, your neck and all this stuff. And it is not pleasant to have that happen. So what did they do? They eventually raised the seats in the late 60s, raised the seats and started putting headrests in there. And that headrest is adjustable. And I'm 6'5", and my wife is 5 feet tall, so it's kind of difficult to get the seat adjusted properly for the two of us. But that headrest should strike you about mid-skull right here. And so your, your body is net force forward, 
accelerated forward by the net force applied by the seat on your body. But your head, your head has to be accelerated forward because it naturally stays at rest by that, the thing. What's the thing called? The headrest. <laughs> headrest. Headrest pushes that thing forward and applies the net force to your head to get your head accelerating with your body. Therefore, hopefully, if this is done correctly, then you don't have any actual or minimal damage to your body from any kind of minor collision. Now, whose fault are these accidents? Well, if you're driving along and you run into somebody else, like, well, pretty much it's yours. The vehicle stops in front of you for whatever reason. You have to leave enough following distance that you can easily, like, and pay enough attention that you can switch your foot from gas to brake and stop before you run into that. That's your responsibility. You're not supposed to run into stuff. Proper terminology, always. Newton's first law. Net force is the vector sum of all the forces acting on the object. Yeah. The <laughs> Velocity, speed with the direction, the rate of displacement. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Now, that gas pedal, that's an acceleration, but that's the thing we think of as the only acceleration. And don't tell me deceleration is the brake pedal. No, it's a type of acceleration. So there's a forward acceleration from the gas pedal. There's a backward acceleration from the brake pedal. And don't give me, it's a negative acceleration. No, think arrows. Gas pedal, forward acceleration. Brake pedal, backward acceleration. Turn the wheel. Like if I want to turn right, my acceleration would be toward the right. Not forward nor backward, because forward acceleration is speeding up. Backward acceleration is slowing down. And perpendicular to your velocity acceleration, that's turning. So I want to turn right, and the steering wheel and the friction force and the net force will be in that direction toward the right. Get, get the language correct. Such a struggle with my students to get the language correct. And that's the biggest thing for Newton's first law. Because you all tend to think like Aristotle. All of you tend to think that objects in, in motion will naturally come to rest. That's what Aristotle thought. That's what you think. Memorize those definitions and get your explanations right. Use physics words. Thanks for watching Learn Physics. And thanks for that thumbs up too. Really helps a lot. New videos most academic weeks. Subscribe for more. I've even got education ideas, Freaky Physics Friday, and Tech Tip Tuesday. And for bicycles, motorcycles, and family adventures, it's my other channel, Bike Physics. You just learned physics.